interesting. Hello, I'm Kay Stepkin, the founder and the president of the newly renamed Vegan Museum. The Vegan Museum is here because our country is in the middle of a grave health, environmental, and ethical crisis. Eating a whole grain vegan diet is one of the most significant factors that can lead us back toward health and harmony. In these times of social distancing, we are very grateful for our museum to be welcome here at the Seventh-day Adventist Fellowship in Fox River Grove, Illinois. Uh, uh, and uh, also a thank you to Pastor Gabriel, who has been so welcoming to us. Thank you. We, we also owe a lot to the seven, our movement owes a lot to the Seventh-day Adventists, um, since much of what is now known about the health benefits of vegetarianism and veganism come from their studies. Also here today is Dr. Ashwani Garg. He is a lifestyle physician Hello, and on our museum board of directors. Thank you, Kay. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Garg. Uh, one of our speakers today, Betsy Bruns, began moving to a plant-based diet in 2012 uh, and discovered the incredible healing powers of food. She was so inspired by this revelation that she became a certified health coach and a licensed Food for Life instructor. In 2016, Betsy left a 20-year corporate career with American Airlines to focus her efforts on wellness coaching and educating. Betsy's sister Amy adopted a plant-based diet in 2017 in an effort to thwart a second open heart surgery, and, uh, and the results way surpassed her expectations, giving birth to the mission of the plant-based sisters. So thank you. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Kay. Thank you for having us here today so that we can share our story. Thank you, Pastor Gabriel. Um, thank you for everyone that is joining to hear our story. We're the Plant Based Sisters, and we came to this way of eating later in life. Uh, food addiction and binge eating is something that is a big part of our history. And our roads to veganism are very different. Yet it revolutionized the way that we live our lives. So our roads were very divergent and we're gonna share more about our story but these images that we wanted to share with you are at pivotal points in our life when we were very desperate to make a change. We were um, reminiscent of the movie Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead. It's a great documentary, and it's about revitalizing your life, through changing what you eat. So maybe some of you have seen it. Maybe you're familiar with it. But I'd like to say when Betsy suggested that word on top of my picture, fat, sick, nearly dead, age 53, I had a serious reaction to that, very negative reaction. Um, she walked me through it. I reworded it a couple times. I don't know about any of you, but the word fat is not something, although I was, is not something I felt comfortable with. So that is something um, that we're gonna talk about a little bit later. Yeah. But as you can see in the pictures, Betsy's a lot younger uh, than I was um, at these pivotal points in our lives. And we're really excited to share this with you. Because food was our nemesis. Food was something that um, was a challenge for us in our life and brought us to low points until it became our medicine. Absolutely. And finding our way to healthy veganism led us to our internal Emerald City. So, Wizard of Oz is a movie that we always enjoyed watching this time of year. 
and following the yellow brick road to the Emerald City so that you could obtain what you were looking for, what you were desiring. And veganism through a compassionate um, and peaceful existence in service to others, veganism is kind of brought us to our Oz and our internal Emerald City. Which I'd like to point out on this picture when I saw it, does Emerald City kind of look like celery to you? It looks like it to me. So I don't know about anyone else here in the room, but uh, clearly that spoke, I think, to both of us. And that's why we wanted to kind of share through this presentation we're going to give a little bit of the Wizard of Oz. Uh, so you'll see a little things through that, going through our different roads right. to help. Our divergent roads, different roads, led us to the same destination. So I'm going to walk you through my road. And as you can see, following the arrow, arrow uh, following the road, I became vegan for the animals. And I'll share more detail about how that happened for me, but it wasn't about health. Um, it was about coming into alignment with something that I realized was part of my life from a very young age. And as a child, had a conflict with eating meat, even though it was normal and even though it was something that I was encouraged to do throughout my life. So my journey was one of compassion and that journey led me to going vegetarian, taking meat off of my plate, and then things didn't go so well for me uh, from a health perspective and I had to work that out and I'll share more about that later, but as I went through my journey and I educated myself, it went from compassion for animals, which is always my overarching concern and priority, to being able to live this lifestyle and feel good and maintain it through vegetarianism, which led me to go vegan because I realized that I had to remove those other animal products from my diet in order to feel good, which then led me to further healthier ways of eating less processed food. Because vegan doesn't always mean healthy, it certainly can, and I think you'll know more about that as we share mm -hmm. our stories today. Yes. But my path, I ended up being whole food plant-based, and uh, it was a, a, a journey that took me several years, whereas Amy's journey was quite a bit different. Mine came much later in life, as I'll share a little bit later, in my 50s. Uh, so my path on the right-hand side, as you can see, and we're going from bottom to top on the heart uh, on the screen that you see. So mine was strictly for health in the beginning. Um, although as an animal lover, I, I did not do it for the animals. Uh, Betsy tried to convert me uh, early on, but it was when very serious, long-term health impacts, major health issues that I'll talk about, impacted me that I completely went whole food, plant-based, immediately into a very uh, quick immersion. And then, which included SOS-free, salt, oil, and sugar is SOS. I kind of think of the SOS fad. And then from there, I really don't consider myself when I speak uh, of my uh, road, I don't really speak as much vegan. Uh, I am truly whole food plant-based, uh, but have come to understand veganism and I absolutely positively do not eat anything that is coming from an animal. So, we wanted to explore this with you a little bit more. Um, the Vegan Museum invites us to explore veganism, and there is just wonderful, rich history in this room that we wish that we could share with you about the road um, to, for, for many and those that paved the way to, to make this revolutionary change in our world, which, as Kay said, is so important right now. We have so many crises going on that 
come back to what is on our plate. And, and what we are, what the Vegan Museum invites us to do is um, in, avoid, you know, and reminds us that vegans avoid all animal products derived from animals such as dairy and eggs and sometimes leather and silk. You know, things we wear on our body as, where as, as well as what we eat. And there are many different types of vegans and philosophies behind veganism. And we invite you to, um, and they invite all of us to explore them further. So we thought before we shared any more detail with you about our stories mm -hmm. and how we came to this place in our life when we're in our mid to late 50s and feeling better than we ever have in our life. Ever. Because ever. we are what we eat and you are what you eat and... Have you thought more about that? If you're here, I'm thinking you probably have, that you have a concern about your health, or you have a concern about the animals, or you have a concern about the planet, or maybe you're just curious. So what does it all mean? It can be so confusing. So we wanted to clear up some of the confusion. With this great chart that's in front of you, um, and I think Betsy can talk to it more uh, she has a lot more education on all of these different way of eating, but these are just some of them. And going through the check marks, you can see on the left uh, side column showing the types of vegetarian, and then check marks showing what you would eat, and then coming down the different ways of eating. And these are just some; these are not all. So I'm going to start at the very bottom, and I'm going to add a column: uh, flexitarian. Under there, I would add, potentially, SAD, which is the standard American diet, which is a diet that so many eat, and it's full of processed food. You might call them Franken-foods. Um, they are foods that your body may not recognize, and things that are in boxes, and plastic, and contain chemicals, and additives, and things that you may not be able to pronounce, and animal foods. Um, and so many of us eating this way, and we have eaten that way, we ate that way for the majority, majority of, of our life, life. <laughs> um, and we got very sick, and uh, we reaped the percussions from that. So if you are moving up the ladder, so to speak, and eating a flexitarian uh, way of eating, you know, you, 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 eat the, you eat the gamut, fruits and veggies and dairies and eggs and seafood. But maybe because you're flexitarian, some days you leave meat off your plate and some days you meet, leave animal foods off your plate. And if you eat, leave meat off your plate, um, you are, but you eat seafood, you're a pescetarian. So you are still eating um, kind of a flexible diet, but you might not eat meat but you eat seafood. And then a lacto-ovo vegetarian eats the gamut, but no meat and no seafood. And moving your way up to healthier and healthier ways of eating, um, you take less of the animal foods off of your plate until you have none. And if you are completely whole food, raw vegan, well, I admire Hats you greatly. Hats off to you because <laughs> that's a toughie, but it's a very super clean way of eating. So I think what this chart um, hopefully speaks to and shows to you is there are many different levels of eating healthy. And if we can say we need to step off of the SAD, the standard American diet um, for all of us um, and move your way, whatever is comfortable for you, whatever works for you, um, but just wanted to share with you in this chart the different ways, uh, which you may or may not be aware. And then we take it to what is um, plant-based versus vegan? That's a question that we get, we get asked all a lot. the time, all the time. And you know what I like to tell people is eating vegan is an amazing thing to do for compassion. It's an amazing thing to do for the planet, for the animals, so that, so that they don't bear the suffering of our choices. 
and the environment is benefited from eating a vegan diet, which as you know by now means eating no animal foods, no animal flesh or any products that come from animals. But is it necessarily healthy? And I think it's something that is really important to distinguish the difference between vegan and plant-based. Because you can eat potato chips and drink beer all day long. Oreo cookies okay. too. Oreo's another one. They're yeah. vegan. But is that healthy? Is that something that's going to support your health? So plant-based versus vegan. On a vegan diet, there are things that absolutely you avoid. And that is a hard, fast rule. You avoid meat and poultry and seafood and eggs and dairy products. And they are absolutely eliminated. They are X'd off. Um, on a plant-based diet, you also don't eat those foods. But the difference, I think, is more of a mindset, and I wonder what, what you think about this, is that if you're on a plant-based diet and you're on it for health, and you can probably really talk to this because mm -hmm. you came to it for health reasons, and you're on a plant-based diet because you have a goal, maybe it's to lose weight, it's fabulous for losing weight, maybe it's to reverse diabetes uh, with your uh, doctor's involvement and guidance, that's something that can be very helpful uh, to manage or reverse diseases like diabetes, heart disease, endocrine diseases, all kinds of great benefits come from eating a plant-based diet. But the mindset could be, this is a diet and perhaps I'm going to have a cheat day. The word diet is something that um, I have never used since being healthy and I'm new to being healthy just three years. So it, for me, is a lifestyle change um, completely. So again, we won't go into too much more detail on this slide. Hopefully you can see it um, and will be provided to you later. But the cleaner that you eat, the healthier you will be. And if you want to reverse disease as I have done, you want to eat as clean as you can. Um, and we can give you a little bit more information about that as we talk further. Right, right. And I'll just, I'll just finish by saying, clean means eating from uh, what we call the power plate. I am uh, an instructor, a Food for Life instructor with the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, and the power plate consists of um, getting your nutrition from fruits, vegetables, legumes, and grains, and very little to no oil. And you want to eat foods in, in the most whole forms as possible, as often as possible. So that is a, a way of, of taking plant-based eating and making it cleaner and making it healthier. And um, the benefits are absolutely tremendous. Astronomical. More than you know, we could ever have imagined. And we got to this place of eating whole food plant-based and joining forces to share the story because of our mother. She ignited our road. And there's a picture of the three of us that I really like to, to reflect upon. And it was taken Christmas 2011. Um, it was taken Christmas 2013, going into the year 2014. And I was two years into my, my vegan plant-based journey. And I love this picture of the three of us. Um, it makes me... I don't like it so much. I don't think it looks good of me, but okay. Amy wasn't <laughs> plant-based yet, and my mother was living with us at the time. And the reason why my mom was living with my husband and I is, is because her health had taken a big decline. And it was a very cold winter, you might remember. There were many, many days where it was sub-zero. And it was too cold and too harsh for her with her arthritis, her fibromyalgia, her COPD, her diabetes, diabetes type two. her frailty to be living alone. So while I had her with me for four months and had her captive, she ate a whole food plant-based diet. She didn't have a choice because that's what I was feeding her. 
And in the months after this picture was taken, so many things about my mom changed. If you've ever neglected to water a plant or some flowers and you find them shriveled and they look like they're, they're too far gone to help, and then you water them and you come back a little while later and they've bloomed, they're absolutely rich with energy and vitality again. And that's what happened to my mom when she stayed with us in 2014. And then she went home and she went back to her ways of living and eating. And not very long later, less than a couple of years, the diagnosis of colon cancer came and it was a very difficult journey. And I always wonder, we always wonder, what would have happened if she stayed the course? She bloomed in plant-based eating in those short months. And then she went backwards. And the outcome is in the next picture. And the next picture on the bottom, um, which you're looking at, is our mother um, towards the end of her life in the hospice. Um, and my sister, as you can see, is holding her hand. My sister guided her towards the end of her life um, after trying to help her bloom and having her bloom in her health, and it was simply done by food. It was not done by another surgery. It was not done by medicine. It was simply by food. Betsy was a little hesitant to want to show this picture. Um, I feel very strongly to show it to everyone. Uh, she did not. Our mother, Mother Bunny, is, is, is who we called her. Uh, did not need to die then. She did not need to die. But this one right here, my sister, guided her through her path. And what was it that mom said to you? That we were on this road together. And that's what I would like for you to take away from this picture, is Betsy reaching out her hand to our mom near death. Betsy is exhausted by what, as a caregiver, which maybe some of you are caregivers as well, the difficulty of caregiving. And she was also caring for me at the same time. Um, the power, the strength, the love, the devotion that is given. And this picture says it all. Um, so we just wanted to share that with you because it was this moment in time where I was facing the major health issues that I'll speak about that ignited my road to health. And I give that to our mother bunny. And my mother ignited my road because I was already on this journey for personal reasons when my mom passed. But going through that cancer journey with her made me realize that I had so much information to share. And I have such a strong desire to help those who are open, who are willing to listen, who are ready to make a change, to do something different. For those who think that eating a vegan diet or a plant-based diet might be difficult, what I experienced with my mother and what you might be experiencing with health challenges is so much harder. So I have to step back a little bit. Amy's journey is a little bit more linear in, in her road of health trajectory. I step back and I think about myself as a teen, which is the picture that you're looking at, and I was suicidally depressed. I tried to end my own life. And that was because of my food addiction that played into becoming a person who was bullied, who was teased, who was sick, who was depressed, who was anxious, who was so laden with chemical foods that I didn't want to live anymore. And throughout my life, things got much better. I was able to overcome that depression, but I was always in this yo-yo pattern of being healthy, not being healthy, losing weight, gaining weight, feeling good, feeling anxious, being more moody. And then in 2012, I woke up and it was New Year's morning and 
my husband and I were drinking coffee and we watched a movie about Temple Grandin's life and I never ate meat after that day. The movie is not about vegetarianism or veganism, much different story actually. Temple Grandin invented a machine that ultimately allowed us to usher cattle into the slaughterhouses more efficiently. But something resonated with me and I knew I would never eat meat again. And then through my journey, I realized that eating more eggs and eating more dairy as a vegetarian was making me sicker and fatter and less healthy. So I took a deep dive into the nutrition aspect of it and found out that eating a whole food plant-based diet and getting all the animal foods out of my diet is what I needed to do and that is what I did because there wasn't anyone around. There wasn't the community or someone like myself who could guide me, who could show me the way. I wasn't aware of that. I wish I had known of so many things. I wish I had known of the vegan museum. I wish I had known that there were hands that could, that could help me then. But through that change, I found so much personal peace and I found so much personal power that I changed my career. I ended a career with American Airlines that um, took me all over the world and I was jet setting all around the world and I realized that I wanted to veg set instead, that I wanted to help people eat a plant-based diet. So I became certified as a health coach on the heels of my mother's death and, and Amy's health turnaround. I became certified as a Food for Life instructor with the Physicians Committee. And I have healed anxiety-fueled emotional eating and drinking uh, alcohol with a nourishing plant-based diet. And these changes have been so monumental, but no change has been greater than my sister's health transformation. And I, I'm so incredibly proud and so incredibly overjoyed that she is here and healthy and can share her incredible story with you. Thanks, Boo. You might need to help me with switching the pages a little bit. Okay. My future was in peril. I faced death twice. Would I have to face it again? Or could I finally turn it around? My story of major health recovery is about finding faith and food in my 50s after nearly a lifetime of darkness and despair. It's also about my sister's love and devotion to heal with food. A long, long time ago, after a year of pre-diabetes, I was diagnosed as a type 1 diabetic at the age of 15. Type 1 diabetes is a chronic, debilitating, difficult to manage disease that has absolutely no cure. I hated it. I hated everything about it. During a long hospital stay, I was told to manage every single aspect of my very young life for the rest of my life, especially the gazillion finger pricks and insulin injections, which later became an insulin pump adhered to my body 24-7 just to keep me alive. And just by having this disease, my life would be shortened. From that moment on, at the age of 15, every step of the way, I fought it and I paid dearly for it. Over the next 40 years, that rebellion grew. And with it, so did my medical and mental diseases. I was a binge eater, a binge drinker. I did drugs and whatever else to fight against this incurable disease. I spent a great deal of time in doctor's offices, ambulances, emergency rooms, hospitals, etc., with people 30, 40, and 50 years older than me battling the same diseases that I was at a far younger age. My body was deteriorating quickly. My list of diseases was long, and it started in my early 20s. So to give you an idea of what I've dealt with, here's some, not all, of the diseases that I have dealt with over that 40-year period. Type 1 diabetes, depression anxiety disorder, binge stress eating disorder, severely impaired hypoglycemic unawareness, urge incontinence, 
some people might be a little uncomfortable with what I'm about to say with this, but urge incontinence is not when you cough or sneeze and you have a little dribble of urine. It is when your entire bladder unleashes. Um, I was wearing Depend diapers um, in my late 30s and 40s. And I share that with you. I'm being very open about my life these days because it has helped other people change their life. Um, that was not a good time <laughs> for me. Um, continuing on, automatic neuropathy, diabetic retinopathy, hypoglycemic seizures, lots of them. Kidney disease, chronic stage three, ADD, attention deficit disorder, mild cognitive impairment, chronic peripheral neuropathy, hypothyroidism, high cholesterol, severe degenerative disease, disease with stenosis in my neck, trigger fingers, all 10 fingers had surgery, carpal tunnel, brain-based cognitive impairments, glaucoma, cataracts, arthritis, major depressive disorder, osteoedema, heart attack, and diabetic ketoacidosis, which I'll talk about, irritable bowel syndrome, yet another one I'm excited to share with everybody, um, heart bypass surgery performed robotically, which I'll talk to you about a little bit later. You don't see a cut here from that, as I am cut since it was done robotically underneath and to the side. Metabolic vascular encephalopathy, or simply called brain damage. Um, this one is the toughest one for me of that entire list um, because it was initially diagnosed as early onset Alzheimer's. Um, we have Alzheimer's throughout our family because the damage I did by being an uncontrolled type 1 diabetic for so long did damage to my brain. Um, I was not able to speak. I was, not, I was able to speak, but I was not able to formulate words. So I really had difficulty with this, and I was hospitalized in a mental hospital because of it. Um, this one is the most difficult one. I'm here being able to talk with you today, and the reason why I'm reading from the script is because of my um, impairment of, um, of memory. So I can't even think of the word memory um, and brain processing. Okay, so now we've got that out of the way. Let's talk about my heart. You see, diabetes and heart disease are strongly linked. As you probably know, heart disease is a leading cause of death in our society. Heart issues started in my late 40s and continued with a widowmaker heart attack along with diabetic ketoacidosis at 51 years old. And um, that picture on the left that you see was just a month before that heart attack occurred. This was hours after gorging on a rack of ribs dripping in barbecue sauce, deep fried onion rings, potatoes smothered with butter and sour cream, and interestingly, death by chocolate for dessert. My recollection is limited. I was in and out of consciousness for how long I do not know. It was through the night and early morning. I do remember throwing up a lot, pain in my jaw, extreme exhaustion, the likes of which I've never experienced before. Fortunately for me, I was supposed to be at a church member's home that next morning. You see, one year prior to this moment I'm speaking of in my heart attack, I found faith. I had never believed in God, ever. But once I did, my deep-seated anger, fears, and self-loathing started to fall away. My life was forever altered and actually saved in the most amazing ways, and this is just one of them. When I didn't arrive as planned and wasn't responding to calls, and text. The next morning, my church friend gathered others at my front door. Police wouldn't break down the door as no one could see me, but they knew something was wrong. My friends knew. My friend found a young man to scale my balcony. He saw me on the floor. My body was limp, my skin gray. After transport, triage, and stabilization, I was admitted to ICU. I had my first set, this first set of heart stents placed recovery in the hospital, and weeks in heart rehabilitation. Now you think that would have shook me to the core, right? No. Not long after, I continued to binge eat. As a result, over the next year and a half, I had three separate angiograms to put additional heart stents and balloons to my arteries 
to open up the clogged arteries. Food addiction consumed my every thought. Then days prior to my 53rd birthday, with my sister, as she always has been in hospitals and places with me, I had heart bypass surgery done robotically. As I mentioned before, that's why you don't see cuts here. My cuts are all here into the side. My faith was so strong, I was not afraid. But recovery was painful long and I had complications, including the two jugs that you see in this picture, which with pneumonia, those fluids were drained from my lungs. So what do you think I did shortly thereafter? You think I learned my lesson? No, I continued to binge eat. Boy, I'll tell you, the medical and pharmaceutical establishments absolutely loved me. If it wasn't enough, a mere five months after this heart bypass, my blood sugar dropped dangerously low into a seizure while driving over this bridge that you see in this picture. It is 600 feet high. Due to hypoglycemia unawareness, a dangerous complication of type 1 diabetes, I could not detect my blood sugars. These can result in prolonged exposure to hypoglycemia, resulting in a seizure, loss of consciousness, and or brain damage. These seizures happened a lot, hence the brain damage. Due to the seizure, I lost control of the car at a high rate of speed. The car careened over the bridge, per witnesses driving behind me, who happened to be a couple. One was an off-duty paramedic, the other was an off-duty nurse. Someone was looking after me. It took hours for firefighters to use the jaws of life to extricate me from the wreckage and a body cage to pull me back up. And I was off to the ER and hospital once again. I think I had one of those. What do you call it when you go to some place uh, quite often? We get a, a frequent flyer. Frequent flyer. I was a frequent flyer in many different hospitals, I think. Time passed and my faith continued to grow. Other life events were on the horizon that forced me to find a reason to change my whys. Why to change? After years of her own declining health, not too different from my own, our mother, Mother Bunny, was diagnosed with colon cancer. I was fortunate to spend a month with her at Betsy's Cottage. That, ladies and gentlemen, was the beginning of my first why. Watching my frail mother wither away is difficult for me to discuss. But what I can tell you is I did not want to go out like that. You see, my mother and I were similar. We neglected our health and were binge eaters, as was my sister Betsy. I knew that this would be my end as well, but would happen for me at a much younger age than her. In November of 2016, my mother passed away. I returned home and began consumed how I did not want to go out like that. I looked back on the years and years that my sister encouraged me to change what I eat, as she has done. Betsy tried the same thing with her mom as she spoke about, but her mom did not comply. Our mom made her choice. She suffered horribly and died a painful death. Shortly thereafter, I was then told I needed a second heart bypass surgery. This was my second why. My mother's death and looking down the barrel of a second heart bypass surgery propelled me to finally make the right choice. I was finally ready to take my health back. So with my sister leading the charge as a mentor and health coach, I spent 30 days in an intensive immersion program at True North Health Center in Santa Rosa, California. Maybe some of you have heard of it and know about True North Health Center. Uh, and this was to learn whole food plant-based eating at 100%. That's what was needed for me. It was the spring of 2017 and I was 54 years old. Upon arrival at True North with my sister, notice how she's always with me, helping me. I was excited, but once she left, I was in complete and utter shock. Could I change 40 years of binge eating? What happens when I get home? I live elsewhere. I do not live, we're hundreds of miles away from one another. I have no support at home. I live alone. I'm all alone. No one eats this way. My questions were, and anxiety were absolutely intense. But I stayed the course. I committed. And within just a couple of days, eating 
clean, whole food, plant-based, stripping my taste buds of the gunk of 40 years. Just a couple of days at True North, I started better than I had felt in my entire life. Every day got better. My body started to heal itself, to recover. I took what I learned and never looked back. Six months later, a heart nuclear stress test proved I did not need a second heart bypass surgery. My cardiologist was so dumbfounded that he and his wife changed to whole food plant-based eating went to a similar program and is whole food plant-based to this day. Since my whole food plant-based immersion, I've had unbelievable health transformations, and here's just a few. My type 1 diabetes is a control for the first time in 40 years, and my diabetic A1C average over those 40 years was nearly cut in half to 5.6 which is considered a non-diabetic range. My, I've lost 40 pounds. I don't know why I just jump over that. <laughs> That's important. My energy level, happiness, and outlook on life are through the roof. I went from 18 pills per day down to one. And if you'll allow me, I usually toss these bags over my head to show you, but this is bag one. And this is bag two. And this was my life. Those went away. Do you remember that list of medical conditions? Most are gone, except for two. The brain damage, which um, I've worked really hard at and continue to do. But I will always have that. And until a cure is found, I will always be a type 1 diabetic. And I work very hard to try to change that. My choice to find faith and embrace a whole food plant-based lifestyle finally gave me a life worth living and so, so much more. I'm so grateful. I'm grateful I chose faith first and foremost. I'm grateful I chose to change. I'm grateful I listened to my sister finally chose a different road than our mother did. I'm grateful I chose plant-based eating, stayed the course, and survive to be with you today. Thank you. And I am so grateful you did that too. And it's, it's just, it's so incredibly powerful. And we have come together in ways that we have never come together in our life. We never even got along when we were kids. No. <laughs> and most of our adulthood. So to be in this mission is is so meaningful and i i'm so proud of what my sister is inspired to give back because she's suffered so much and i've seen it my whole life and as soon as she got well she wanted to share this and and challenge herself to get in front of others and we have a community together and our community is based on our experience with being vegan and our roads, our yellow brick roads were very different, but it led us to this moment. And you just heard all of the amazing things that happened to Amy's life. And for me, what I want to stress more than anything in my life is gratefulness to have you here today and have you healthy and see you happy for the first time in your life. Yep. And for the peace that I have in my life because being vegan has brought me a level of peace and joy that I never had experienced before. And if I could jump in on that, you're, you're doing beautifully <laughs> with what you're explaining, but on community, it's something the Vegan Museum is doing. It's something that when I came back from True North, again, if you remember what I said, I have no one there. I have no one at home. She's hundreds of miles away from me. And what she instilled in me is, Amy, you have got to get a community. And I tried it out. I went somewhere. Some of you are going to be mad at me for saying this, but this is honest. I went to Vegan Cincinnati, um, and they had out all goodies and cakes, which were vegan. Oh, look, you're, you're smiling. And I, being a binge eater and, and a type 1 diabetic and everything else, I couldn't be around that. And I felt badly. But then Betsy said, push on, 
find more. And I found Plant-Based Healthy Cincinnati. I'm now super involved with them. That was my team. That was my community. That made a difference. And then they brought me out to do talks. And, and so I've gotten better about the comfort that I have, but I speak to people all the time and try to encourage them. Anybody can make a change. It is all within us, but community is incredibly important. It is, and that's what this is right now, all of you coming together to learn about this, and there's many more events, and there's many, there's many resources. Wherever you are, you can find them. You don't have to be alone in the vegan journey, and it's so much more fun, and we've talked about serious things today, but before we get to chocolate, and we're getting to chocolate here, <laughs> because you can eat chocolate, when you're vegan and whole food plant-based too, is remember that everything that you need is within you. And like Linda the Good Witch said, you've had the power all along, my dear. And there is no place like home. And home is within you. And your home is your body. It is your temple. And eating a plant-based diet is the best way that we have found to take care of it. So, we mentioned chocolate. Did we? We did. So what we wanted to do is we wanted to share a recipe with you. Um, and this recipe is from the um, Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine Food for Fitness class. And um, no bake brownie bites will leave you feeling so satisfied. They are absolutely amazing and so simple to make. So we're gonna whip some up. Can you hear us okay with the masks on? Okay, so this is how simple it is to have chocolate at a moment's notice with items that you have in your pantry potentially right now and if you don't go get them and they will stay good for a very long time um, so this recipe is low in fat but high in phytonutrients and I'm just gonna go ahead and take my Let's mask off Let's do that. I think we're okay. safe here all right so um, the first thing that you want to do is you want to take the first four ingredients which are pitted dates raisins, oats, and pumpkin seeds and put them in your food processor. Now, with the dates, uh, what I want to say is make sure you pit them because if you don't, you're gonna get some crunch in your brownie bites. And what I do is make sure that my dates are room temperature. They're a little easier, they're more pliable to work with and you just pull them apart and, and you take out the, the pits or you can buy them already pitted. So that's one and a half cups, or about 12 to 15 medium to large dates. Then one half cup of raisins. And I'm putting this in a food processor. One cup of oats. And pumpkin seeds. These are great for omegas your omega fatty acid. So you've got potassium here, you've got fiber, you've got zinc with your oatmeal, um, you've got your omega, and all these things are very secret. You don't have to tell the kids. What do you mean they're secret? What do you mean they're, they're secret? They're secretly healthy. Oh, oh, they won't know. <laughs> okay. That this is healthy, right? It's all going to be um, hidden within this delicious snack. So. Um, what I'm going to do, it's going to get a little bit loud in here, okay? So I'm going to take those first ingredients and we're just going to blend them until they're crumbly. Okay, and then we're going to add the remaining ingredients, which is the cocoa powder, the optional vegan protein powder, um, some sea salt. Now what I've done is I've pre-measured everything here and I'm just gonna pour that in here. But with the chocolate chips, what I want to mention, um, which 
are optional is you want to make sure that you are buying chocolate chips that have no dairy and no egg and you simply just read the ingredient list and there are brands out there right now that um, are very it's, it's very simple to find them in, in most grocery stores Trader Joe's chocolate chips um, they do have a version that don't have dairy in them as well so um, come on muscles <laughs> uh, so just make sure you read the label and then you add some vanilla and then you blend everything until pretty much to your food processor starts to shake but I'm gonna spare you that right now because we've already made some for you and this recipe yields 23 delicious no-bake brownie bites which we would like for you to sample. Great, thank you so much. Looks delicious. We like to see, get your, get your reaction here and on the camera because I've tasted these for the first time just this morning and unbelievable. <laughs> what do you think, Kay? It's wonderful. And what I really like about it is I make something similar, but mine has maple syrup in it. I really like that it's all whole foods in here. Right. Um, that it's um, raisins and dates. I love that. Yeah, so yeah. it's sweetened with non-refined sugar. And if you leave the chocolate chips out, you're 100% free of refined sugar. Mm -hmm. But you get your chocolate fix. This would be a great treat for the kids for Halloween season. And if someone wants, they can put cacao nibs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that would be a great... And Instead I, of the cocoa powder? Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. And I love to say that recipes are a suggestion, not a hard, fast mm -hmm. rule. So, yeah, I Delicious. love mixing Thank them up. Delicious. Thank you. So... Thank you. That is our uh, sweet treat for the day, and our message with that is eating vegan is delicious, and you don't have to miss out on anything. No. And eating whole mm -hmm. food plant-based. You can eat pizza, you can eat pasta, you can eat Mexican food and the variety of flavors and, 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 and delicious meals that you can prepare is endless. Or you can make it simple for people like Amy. Thank you. Who don't cook. I don't cook. So once again, the difference between the two of us is she is a cook and has been, has enjoyed cooking. I never have been still do not but i'm learning the more events that we do together but you don't have to cook and make all of these big huge wonderful meals if you want to fabulous i'm off with for you for that i personally don't you can make it as simple as possible there's a whole gamut of ways to go from simple ways to change what you're eating to eat this way to a more complex and it's your choice it's right up to you. So what would the next steps be? I mean, we might all be in different stages right now. You might already be vegan. You might already be whole food plant-based. You might know someone who you want to share this information with. Uh, so the next step that we recommend is sign up for a 21-day vegan kickstart with the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. You can just Google that, 21-day vegan kickstart, and sign up for the program through their website or through the app. They have an, an Android and a iPhone app. And you'll get recipes and motivation and videos and information that will guide you through a 21-day trial of this way of eating. So even if you're eating vegan, maybe you can up-level you know, the quality of your food or share it with a loved one. Or if you're someone who is vegan curious, we always say you have to put enough days together eating healthy in order for your body to receive the benefits and for you to feel the difference. So you can just go to that website and, and sign up, and that would be a great next step. Absolutely. And, and if I can just interject here, the way that I did it by going whole food plant-based in an immersion program 30 days is so you can strip your taste buds. That's something that True North told me, and I said, ugh. I'm going to go home and I'm going to binge again. I just know what's going to happen. But I can tell you from personal experience, your taste buds will be stripped by eating this way. And I'm a huge proponent of doing it at 100%. 
because it works so well for me. Again, we know that everyone's different and you can do it a different way, but if you wanna jump into the pool fast, um, if you want to do something quickly, if you're someone who just is really in a bad frame of health, mental and physical, do it. Do it. 21 Day Vegan Kickstart is a great way to go. But get it done. Get those taste buds stripped. It'll work. Yeah, and then the, the, another step that you could take is there are cooking classes that are being held all around the country and all around the world, actually, uh, with Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. And there's been a big cooking for COVID campaign because we know that with this virus comorbidities and health conditions such as obesity and diabetes and high blood pressure make one more susceptible to the virus and the severe, the severe version of the virus. So why not work on improving your health and improving your immune system at the same time? So you can find out more about where classes are being offered. And in response to COVID, a lot of these classes are still being held virtually and online. So you can uh, learn all about the evidence-based information of plant-based eating and great recipes and cook along with the instructor online. You can also uh, check out my website, vegsetter.com, and reach out to me for a free consultation. I offer a free 30-minute consultation um, to get you on your way. So those would be um, some great next steps. And... Um, we have a question for you. It's we like, uh, yeah. I mean, like, if you don't eat leaves, <laughs> where do you where get, you get your, your protein? protein? <laughs> so that's our question, and we didn't know if anyone had any questions for us. But if not, if not, we'd like to thank you for having us here at the Vegan Museum. This has been a joy. Uh, it's been a joy to do this for the plant-based sisters together, and um, this is our first time, actually, um, that we are sharing our story to to this uh, to this degree. So thank you so much for being here. We are very happy because, because we, we are, are the plant-based plant sisters. Wishing you a, a more delicious life. <laughs>